sorry for the brief delay. Um, I was uh, um, talking to my son, saying goodnight to him over in uh, Idaho. Um, so, so that was pretty cool. All right, here we go for the second um, chapter. Um, note to the reader, if you are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, feel free to move on to the next chapter. What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? There are so many different explanations out there, and so I'm going to give some notes on my own two cents of research. Now, since my primary intention is to get you activated with the baptism, and my assumption is that you believe and desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, I will not spend any time on attempting to prove anything. So with utmost respect, humility, and love, I will leave it up to your own discretion to decide how you take what I have understood in comparison to what you currently believe. I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the various ways the Holy Spirit enters into, dwells in, and releases out of the three parts that make us up as created beings of body, soul, and spirit made in the image of God. Um, I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit can be received in various ways, but ultimately by faith. I believe that by faith, um, sorry, hold on. Uh, oh, I believe that by faith with the baptism, we can, by God's sovereignty or by our own will, have the ability to exercise the manifestation of various spiritual phenomena that flows from God through us in a form of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to a person or purpose with the ultimate goal of bringing glory to God in order to advance his kingdom. Okay, so let's move on to how I was baptized. And then we can concentrate on your activation to get you baptized. Sound good? Okay, cool. Here we go. The spark of desire. Here's how my little spark ignited into a huge fire. To start out, I have heard several people speak in tongues, and I have noticed that although each person has their own unique prayer language of tongues, there is something that is common that I have heard among many people who speak in tongues. This allowed me to construct a mental baseline of what speaking in tongues actually sounds like. Now, one day I had a conversation with my friend who had listened to a prophetic speaker by the name of Derek Prince, who taught on how to activate the gift of speaking in tongues. My friend decided to follow the activation, and as a result, he was released to be able to speak in tongues. As I listened to a demonstration of him speaking, I compared what he was speaking to the mental note I remembered in my mind that other people were speaking, um, and there was a common match between them. Needless to say, this enabled me to quickly identify that Derek Prince had a working activation. So since I desired to be activated in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, desired, I decided to go and check out the video to follow the activation myself. The first half of the video was about the details of the baptism. The second half was a collection of activations. For example, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophesying, and even a demonstration of healing uh, miracles, and casting out evil spirits. If you'd like to see it, I would encourage you to go to the YouTube um, and to YouTube and type in these keywords: Derek Prince dash exercising spiritual gifts, part one to three. Now, of course, that video uh, might and might not be there, um, but thus, but thus far, YouTube has kept it, kept it up for several years. I'm just saying that because either the person who uploaded it or YouTube could decide to take it down at any time. Baptism activation. Okay, so there are sometimes several differences that will take place with the baptism. Not every baptism will release the speaking of tongues right away. And not every baptism is going to have a noticeable emotional feeling or tangible power of God's flow either. This is, however, the manifestations we should expect from the Lord. Sometimes it happens, other times it does not. Now, if you receive the baptism by faith, then you have it. It is yours because you asked for it by faith. Jesus says that if you ask for bread, you will not be given a stone. And you can see Luke 11, 9 to 13 on that. So if you ask for the right thing, you will never be given the wrong thing. 
So just keep in mind that if you ask for it but don't feel it or see any evidence of it, for example, speaking um, tongues or a tangible presence, that does not in any way mean that you did not receive it. Because you asked for it, you did indeed receive it. You might be thinking, well, Rich, what about the speaking in tongues and the evidence of signs and wonders and the tangible overwhelming feelings of love and power? That is a great question. And what seals the answer is knowing what the baptism sometimes or knowing that the baptism sometimes comes in different parts. See, there's the receiving of the baptism and also the release and outflow of the baptism. Saturation of the atmosphere with the Holy Spirit in preparation to receive him. Now, what I'm about to show you does not have to happen in the same way, the same exact way it happened for me. I just chose to do it this way because it was how Derek led it. So here is what I did thus far to receive. I checked my heart to ensure it was empty and ready to receive the Holy Spirit. I forgave all people. I asked God for forgiveness and various other things that activated a pureness of heart. I then, I then called upon the Lord Jesus, my baptizer, to pour out the Holy Spirit into my midst so that the Holy Spirit filled the atmosphere around me. Actually receiving of the Holy Spirit. Actual receiving of the Holy Spirit. I then chose to open my physical mouth as a prophetic gesture by faith to begin drinking in the Holy Spirit into my belly by means of physically breathing to allow the Holy Spirit in. As you will see in my notes later in this chapter, both drinking and breathing the Holy Spirit are scriptural activations for the baptism. Um, I actually took that out of the book. I need to change that, um, the notes. At that time, I did not believe I was baptized. But now, as I am writing this, I realize that at that time, I actually indeed was baptized. Attempt number one to activate the outflow of speaking in tongues. After the Holy Spirit came in, I told him, I am now going to yield my life and my tongue to him. I chose to no longer speak a single word in the English language. And so by faith, I opened my mouth to move my tongue. Now, at this time, I was speaking words of gibberish that I felt were silly and coming from me, which they were. I really was speaking crazy words out my own mouth with my own thoughts. Or were they my own thoughts? Well, at this time, I believed it did not work for me. But I found out later on that it did. So the outflow happens right away when you begin speaking by faith. Okay, now, uh, what I say next is from the standpoint of how I felt when I believed my outflow was not yet activated. Um, and I bolded that last section uh, that I just said. I bolded that last section on purpose to capture your attention because it is important. Um, I'm going to read it one more time. Okay, now what I say next is from the standpoint of how I felt when I believed my outflow was not yet activated. Delayed outflow. So at that time for me, it did not activate. I was baptized, but it did not yet, but I did not yet have the outflow of speaking in tongues. So for a few more days, I would pray and ask God if I was missing something. I know he did his part, and I know I did my part, so why was it not activating? I got a little discouraged because I didn't know what else I could possibly do. But even so, I know I know there was nothing wrong and that everything had, had been done perfectly for the activation. The outflow has come. A few days later, I went to a Facebook group I'm a part of and asked a member about an activation for the outflow of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I followed the link that was sent to me and found a quiet place to be with just me and God. I read the prayer activation and invited the Spirit much in the same way Derek Prince led me, led me to. But this time the precious gift of the Holy Spirit was released in the outflow. Praise God. Now, please do remember this entire time the outflow was working. I just didn't realize it. Why was the outflow released this time? So what on earth was the difference? The difference was the state of my heart and mind. The volcano needed to be aroused in order to explode. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So how did my heart overflow? How did the volcano explode? Well, I thought about God. 
I thought about how much he loves me. I sensed his love around me. I kept focused and thinking about experiencing God's love and came closer and closer to him in my mind's eye. I saw pictures of golden light surrounding me. I saw the Lord Jesus hugging me. I felt the winds of the Holy Spirit intertwine around my being, and I relaxed into the enjoyment of his presence. And with unbroken focus and worship and reverence and excitement towards God's presence, the magma in my volcano rose to its peak and exploded with power as the precious language of the Holy Spirit geysered out with rivers of living waters. I came into God's presence and allowed my heart to overflow. Praise had nowhere to go but out. Praise God. I was not focused on the gift of God, but the God of the gift. The key to release. Honestly, the true key was confidence to speak by faith. I was activated before, but only sheepishly spoke a few words. The only way activation takes place is when you are fired up with the volcanic eruption that rises like a geyser of confidence with total abandon of not caring what you sound like or what others are hearing. And yes, you will sound like a fool. Yes, you will wonder if it is you um, speaking and not the Holy Spirit. But I tell you that it's when you step out and start speaking like a fool by faith, just like David dancing like a fool. That same heart attitude is what will cause activation. The activation, in effect, is actually you speaking like a fool by faith. And as you keep speaking, the Holy Spirit will soon take over what you are saying, and you will begin flowing with speaking in tongues. Your language of tongues is unique to you. Your language develops over time. Keep practicing it, and you will learn new words, new phrases. It is just absolutely amazing. Here are a few observations I made when the words began to flow. Could I hear or see at that time the outflow of the words before they were spoken? I could not. Every word I spoke had no associated thought or analysis. My mouth just started speaking strange stuff. Can I now see the words that are spoken? Yes. If I place something to write on the inside of my mind's eye, um, like a piece of paper, and watch the words that appear, I can then speak what I see. Can I now hear the words that are spoken? Yes. I can hear the sound of the voice of my own spirit as the Holy Spirit speaks through me. There is a huge explanation and activation on this in a different chapter. Was there an emotional feeling? As far as emotion, I felt love inside of my heart, but it was different than the love that you feel when somebody tells you they love you. It was spiritual, a love from God. I do not, however, always feel the emotion of love. In fact, I can be in quite literally any mood with any emotion and still release the outflow. But hey, that is one of the purposes of it. It is to help you in, um, during times of need. Could you physically feel it? At this time, both of my hands and arms began tingling. Like I had an invisible, invisible thick gloves on. They had a certain weight to them, but yet the gloves actually made my arms and hands feel lighter. And I felt the desire to raise my hands up to praise God and praise him I did. And the outflow of tongues continued. I do not always physically feel the outflow though. There's an activation on physically feeling, um, physically feeling it in a later chapter as well. What are the words like when sounded out? Here's what my unique version is like when I sound it out. E she kan la vandia shin de la kos shandala ka kola ti she su kol salakanda. And it, it obviously flows a whole lot um, better than that um, when the Holy Spirit is speaking. <laughs> so, um, how can I interpret the words that are spoken? Well, once you get the flow down, slow down your words and pay attention to only a single word or phrase, either in your mind's eye or what you hear in your mind. Then simply ask God what it means, and then wait for a response from him. He might tell you audibly or show you vis visually. There are chapters written about detailed activation for both hearing and seeing in this way as well. Are you ready to get activated? Okay, well, let's do it then.
just try the steps I put in this chapter and for it and for it by faith. Now there is currently a group on Facebook called Inside Out Training and Equipping School founded by Cheryl Fritz. Now this school teaches all kinds of activations from seeing in the spirit, traveling in the spirit, speaking prophetically, words of knowledge, and also speaking in tongues. So what goes on in this group is several trainers and students join together in a scheduled live conference call. During the call, there are interactive activations where you can take part in helping others get activated and also get activated yourself as well. It is an incredible school that is a very low cost and absolutely worth every penny because it will quite literally change your life. I have never been, um, I have never seen a school anywhere that has uh, scheduled live activations of all sorts. So I highly recommend becoming a student and perhaps even someday a trainer. Baptism of fire experience. In this experience, I was watching one of the video trainings within Jonathan Welton's school called Welton Academy. And at the end of the video, Jonathan asked us to pray for a wonderful woman of God and that the prayer we pray would be just as effective by those watching the video at a later date as it would be effective by actively being present at the time. I took what he said to heart and stretched out my hands toward the screen to pray for her. And I prayed deeply from my heart. At this time, without any other thought, I felt a fire pour down over the top of my head, and it quickly moved its way down my entire body and arms and turned to a very cold sensation down below and super hot at the top. Now, as this was happening, my entire body felt like it was being shocked by electricity. Every muscle in my body had flexed, and it was pulsating with one surge after another, and an immense amount of love was just flowing. And I could feel the movement of the spiritual flow in, in my um, bells. I don't know what that means. I need to fix that. Um, uh, just circulating like a small moving and soothing tornado. And the spiritual movement was traveling through my arms and hands. And my hands and arms were tingling and locked into place from the consistent charge of spiritual elect electricity. And I could feel massive amounts of heat coming out of my hands as well. This experience lasted for the remainder of the prayer, which was around one full minute. Now, although I have no idea if this actually was a baptism of fire experience, um, to me, it certainly seemed like it. Here's a side note for the reader. Later in chapter five um, on open visions and dreams, I had an experience years ago that I speak about where I was spiritually submerged within water. And it, and it could be that that experience was an actual form of baptism by the Holy Spirit. But to this day, I'm not sure. It just seems like that could be the case. All right, let's proceed onto the path of this adventure. Okay, um, I'm going to start.